This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. and welcome to Northern Spain. This is a region that has centuries of history, some of it on display, some of it still in use. Merindad de Estella, the Estella Oriental region, founded in 1090 by the monarch of Pamplona on the banks of the Ebro River. Estella, a city of merchants, still has buildings from that earlier time. Not too far away is Los Arcos. Some of it goes back to 72 BC, but became a proper village in the 11th century. You can take a walk back in time, just behind the church of Santa Maria. Lots of tourists like to go through the old alley. We're not here for history, sightseeing or walking though. At the Navarra circuit, next to the village, we're racing in the Hanko, 12 hours of Navarra. And it starts a full day early. We're here at the circuit of Navarra in Spain for the second round of the European Season Championship. We're in a very special situation because uh, today it's race day. Initially it wasn't planned this way, but we have uh, received a request from teams to be done earlier on, on uh, Sunday. And um, all together we made the decision to amend the timetable. So after all the 12 hour race will be split in uh, two parts, three hours today, nine hours tomorrow and an uh, intervention where you park for me in between. The schedule change was requested by the teams. Essentially, that means there'll be no racing at night. The night driving was a very good idea. And uh, the mechanics uh, today should work from 12 o'clock till 12 o'clock in the night. And uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning, they had uh, to load everything in the container. I think they're also only people. And it's not easy to do it. And uh, yeah, everyone was uh, talking about this here when we arrived. This was, uh, this was also a good information for us. We write a letter. This is the first time this track is hosted an international endurance series. We normally uh, only have uh, short races and uh, something races uh, from the Spanish Championship who have uh, endurance races but they are short they are from one hour more or less and we are very happy to try to, to work with a real endurance uh, championship like a Creventic championship it's the second round of the european leg of the Creventic fia international endurance series powered by hankook in the new schedule saturday morning had qualifying with the start of the race in the afternoon qualification was hard for us uh, because the uh, Mercedes was going super super quick. Maybe we can do a P3 or something like that, but uh, I already already drove two set of tires, so that, that was enough. And then we said, okay, we go back to pit, check the car, and get well prepared for the race. Uh, I managed to uh, get pole position. Uh, I had a great lap. Um, we changed some things in the car uh, during qualifying because we didn't have the right setup yet. But at the end, I did uh, the team did a great job. I did a great lap, and uh, I was uh, yeah, half a second uh, in front of all the, all the others. So yeah, really good. Very tight at the front of the field. The top eight within 0.8 of a second. Yeah, really tight. Yeah, yeah. I think the first eight was in seven tenths or eight tenths, and the first three, four in one tenth. So it was very, very tight. Yeah. Even the E deck car set a good time, which perhaps wasn't to be expected after the previous day's problems. We have uh, many problems at the, at the beginning. Uh, we broke the engine uh, on Friday. Uh, Paul uh, hit the wall uh, just uh, before to, to break the engine. So the weekend uh, start uh, very bad. But uh, during the qualifying, uh, I, uh, I did the, the second place. We had a very exciting uh, qualifying session, especially in the 991 class, you could see um, that the lap times were, were just slightly um, 
uh, differing. They were very close to each other. But also for the overall pole position, we had several uh, changes, uh, which uh, after all um, the Hoffer racing uh, Mercedes could uh, stay on top. And uh, well, um, we're expecting this battle that we could see in qualifying to extend towards the race uh, as well. Today in the first part, then uh, strategic choices in the, in the end before uh, the park for May break. And uh, tomorrow uh, we expect these battles to uh, also continue on track. On pole, one of the A6 Am cars with A6 Pro cars starting from second and third. So what's their plan for the start of the race? Uh, we'll start from pole, so we try to keep the lead uh, uh, for the race. Um, and I will drive as much as possible. Then Chantal will do the rest of the stint uh, of the first three hours and to try to keep, uh, keep it on the lead lap. And then for tomorrow, then we're all on the same page and then hopefully we can uh, drive to the podium. The safety car dives off the track at the very last moment. Now the pole sitter controls the field to the start-finish line and as soon as the lights are out, we'll start the first ever Hankook 12 hours of Navarra. And the lights are out, the GT cars rush towards the first corner. The pole sitter, the number one Hofer Racing AMG, goes into turn one with a little gap to the rest of the field. Behind, there's a huge battle for second place. Maro Calamia, the number 15, who started from fourth, can't stay on the track. Yeah, I was a bit too late on the break, and I go straight straight out, but I leave him pass again. But after the first corner, I was still on P3, I think, and after the first lap, also on, on corner one, I took the, the second one, and I was following the, the first one, but uh, the gap was too big, so we were still on P2 and nothing to do. The 17 car, making it very difficult for anyone to pass. It's a longer race, and I'll try for, for the first time to, to uh, defend my position, but uh, I, I cannot, uh, I, it's not possible. Once past the E-Deck Mercedes, the chasing group are trying to get back to the numbers 1 and 15. They've already pulled out a decent lead. Behind others still have to negotiate the E-Deck car. I think he uh, really wanted to uh, take me behind him and uh, I had to push very hard and uh, then in turn three I think was it uh, he did a little mistake so I uh, went in to the corner uh, next to him and I had enough, enough speed to overtook him for the f fourth turn. Third, fourth and fifth, Forge Porsche, Herbeth 911 Porsche and the Bohemia Energy Ferrari chasing each other but ten seconds behind the leading pair but they're slowing themselves down by battling for position. I was really close to the first car and about uh, after 10 laps. So he struggled a little bit with the tires and yeah, um, my car and the Ferrari was going quicker at this moment and um, suddenly in, in, in turn three, um, the Ferrari tried to pass me on the inside and yeah, I couldn't see him. In endurance racing, you need to be aware what is around you but in corners, that might be impossible. He was inside, but he, he can't see me because it was a really tight corner and uh, long braking. And we just touched a little bit. And uh, I say sorry to him and he, say, he, say, he said sorry to me. And it was, was normal race. The Porsche 911 comes back to the pits. The crew having a look at the damage. It's more severe than it looks. The complete rear was damaged and we had to fix it, so we lost 10 laps. It was only bodywork, but everything was destroyed, so we could not um, fix it perfectly. It was improved by a lot of tape, so hope uh, we can continue like it was. Just 20 minutes into the race, the E-Deck Mercedes is back in the pit lane. Paul has been defending his position stoutly. It's very difficult. I destroyed my tires on the three laps. And uh, we must uh, to change and uh, 20 minutes is not good. After 24 minutes in the pits, the 911 is back on the track. The number 11 Ferrari managed to stay out. With our car that is not so, so strong in torque and in power, uh, I had to fight with, with Porsche, with Mercedes. And uh, when you are fighting with, with other cars and then the track is so strong, uh, every corner are first gear. So it's really difficult to overtake and to, uh, to uh, find the space. Battles on the track continue and Hans Holmand opts to be the first to come in for fuel. Yeah, we don't want the, the lot of traffic on the fuel station. So we decided to get the car a little bit in earlier, to get it earlier in. And uh, 
That was good. We were first at a fuel station. After that, there was a lot of traffic at the fuel station. One hour completed. Let's have a look at the standings. Top four all on the same lap, and from the start, the leader has been the number one of Hoffa Racing. The Swiss team is ahead of their Swiss countrymen from Swiss team. Czech-based Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha number 11, Ferrari is third. Seventh overall and first in the 991 class, the EDEC number 75, Porsche. Porsche Laureate Racing 65 second, and the 73 of EB Mortis is third. Apart from the QSR car, all of the 911 class is still on the same lap. The SPX class sees the true racing crossbows taking the top two positions, 116 ahead of 117. Third in the class, the 204 Vortex V8. This is endurance. The uh, last seven years I'm training for endurance races like this, and this is what I like. I don't like the sprint races, and the people need to show in first 10 minutes what they can. This is much more fun, I, I would say. So endurance is something what I like. Quinta de Nevada in northern Spain is 3.9 kilometers long. Construction started in 2007, first race here in 2010. It's a licensed Formula One test track and its 15 corner layout is very demanding for the drivers. Uh, the circuit of Navarra is a, is a very uh, beautiful uh, scenic uh, track. Um, it has uh, beautiful surroundings, but um, it is a very technical track. It has uh, a few long straights, a few high-speed corners, but also a few hairpins involved. So, so after all, it is not the fastest of all uh, circuits we are having this year. It's rather technical, but uh, this is what makes it an endurance challenge for all the drivers and teams uh, that are joining us for this event. The characteristics of the track make it one you might love or hate. The first, second and third curve is uh, difficult to, to drive but the rest is quite easy, so not so technical one. Very nice one. You know, for, for our car it's too tight because we have to put first gear every corner, stop the car and then 90 degree and then push throttle and I don't like this. I've been here like a couple of years ago already, and uh, but still it suits the car really well. We have a lot of braking points and uh, very tight corners and it's really nice to drive. This course is very much like a street course. It's very fast, then a lot of brakes. Very fast and a lot of brakes. It's a kind of course that puts a lot of wear and tear on the brakes. I like it a lot uh, because it's uh, a tricky section. There's a lot of technique parts and also high speed. So uh, Navarra is good, really good. Kravendik are very happy to put on a race here. We have been in touch with the circuit management already for several years now. And um, this year we decided it's time to come here and uh, we can uh, just extend our thanks for how happy we are about the good cooperation with circuit staff and management. And the circuit are pleased to have this series here too. We are very happy because the, the race is running all okay at the moment and you can see we have uh, good weather, good uh, ambience, good uh, uh, cultural areas uh, around us. And you can see with our circuit is a very new circuit. It's uh, built in 2010, and we have a very new installation. It's very big to uh, host uh, this kind of events. And we always uh, are looking for uh, give the, um, the best races possible. Early evening at Los Arcos, and the race is in full swing. Plenty of cars heading to the pit lane for fuel and sometimes for new tyres and a change of driver as well. The dynamic of the race is fascinating. Some cars perhaps a little slower on track but can go longer on their fuel so they gain back positions while their competition are taking on fuel. Belgian-based QSR racing skill team found out how much time a fuel stop can add to your race when they had an issue with the car. Yes, we had a big problem uh, for refueling. Uh... It took us uh, more than seven minutes, so we lost a couple of laps, and uh, this was really a headache for us. Right now, we don't have any idea what the problem is, but it took us a long time, and we need to uh, solve the problem. Still leading, number one from Hoffa Racing. Well, the AM cars are allowed to, to fuel up a little bit more, 
So the pro cars need to uh, fuel up, uh, make some more pit stops. So that's the advantage of the of the AM cars. Mistakes do happen. Most easily recoverable. Not so, however, for the 204 of Vortex. Philippe Valenza ended up in the gravel trap at the end of the back straight. The extent of the damage soon becomes clear as the Vortex is being pulled out. The class Paul sitting car can't be repaired at the track and is withdrawn. Unfortunately, one car needed to retire. Uh, the 204 uh, Vortex car, they, they had uh, um, quite a heavy impact. Um, but we we're looking forward to them having them back in Imola and wish them better luck next time. The Code 60 has come at an ideal time for many teams just before two hours of racing and the driver's stint is a maximum of two hours so they bring the car in for a pit stop and a refuel i had a little bit problems with the tires it was uh, very hard to drive so i have to be very smooth with the car and very uh, uh, direct in the corners but uh, i was able to handle the car and uh, at the end it was very nice to drive Car collection number 34 is in the overall top three and now in the lead of the A6 AM class. As we close in on the finish of the first part of the race, for strategic reasons, some teams decide to come into the pits. That means they'll start the second part tomorrow with a full tank of fuel. We have a old tyre and we stop it to, to do a full tank. So the last 20 minutes, it's very hard to pass the number 65 to get the, the first position. Most A6 Pro cars have taken that pit stop. The A6 AM cars have stayed out on track. So the AM cars are now leading the race. Chantal Kroll finding out this track can be difficult to master. I was not that happy with my first stint in the first part of the race. Um, I did not get along with the track. Um, the harder I tried, the, the worse it got. Um, and I must say it's I don't know, it's a really difficult track for me. Um, you don't have that many long streets where you can rest a little. You have to work all the time. And uh, yeah, the harder I work, the, the worse it got. Elmar Grimm in car collection number 34 has got a good gap to the pro sport number 85, but he puts his position in danger on the last corner of the last lap. Uh, I make a donut because after the finish line, it's not allowed, so. <laughs> I do it on the last corner. Luckily, Elmar Grimm was willing to tell the real reason behind the spin. All the time I take uh, first gear and uh, I uh, think about uh, it's better to go in the second gear. Uh, I tasted it and it was not good. <laughs> so, it's crazy to do it during the race, but uh, I uh, had to. I think uh, one minute uh, for the second, and so it was no problem. So that's it for the first leg of this unplanned last-minute two-parter. We are now done with the first part of the Hankook 12 Hours of Navarra, and uh, cars are in park for May conditions uh, in the intervention brake area. Uh, we have seen quite some lead changes, and uh, interestingly, also some cars just pitting, fueling new tyres uh, before the end of uh, part one. It's a strategic choice. Tomorrow uh, we will see how that pans out when other teams will need to, uh, to pit that are now ahead of them. Before we and the cars get tucked up for the night, let's have a look at the standings. Apart from Porsche Racing in fourth, all of the top six are A6 AM cars. Elmer Grimm in the number 34 Audi didn't lose his lead with that spin towards the chequered flag. Pro Sport 85 Mercedes is second overall, the 15 of Swiss team third. So the Porsche Racing number 29 fourth overall leads the A6 Pro class. Number 11 of Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha, one lap down in second. Third, the EDEC Sport Racing number 17. In GT4, the 446 of Endurance Team Romania have finished this part of the race with 90 laps completed. QSR Racing School Mercedes 254 second, three laps back. The cars are supposed to stay in Parc Ferme overnight, but QSR Racing School have taken their 254 Mercedes back to the garage. We had a big problem by uh, refueling the car and uh, we decided to take the car in and look at the problem. Luckily our mechanics uh, did a very good job and uh, we found out that we had a problem with the tank. Uh, everything is solved now so we, can, uh, we are back in the race.
That's a 10 lap penalty for working on the car overnight. We lose uh, two laps uh, every time we went to refueling. So today I think we will need to refuel six, seven times. So for us it's, uh, it's again uh, in time. The 117 crossbow also taken out of Park Fermi. Uh, in the last lap of the first race distance three hours, we had a brake pad failure, which destroyed the brake disc. And um, when we saw it in Park Fermi, we were not sure what else was damaged, so it was, in our opinion, more safe to bring the car in, get a 10 laps penalty for today, and check everything and fix everything again. Starting from the front row, the A6 arm entry of Car Collection Motorsport. So we are starting from the pool position, and uh, we have, will have a hard fight, and it's another nine hours, so there could be a lot of things happened and also the, the tactic. Chantelle Kroll has used the break between the Saturday and Sunday parts of the races to improve herself. I uh, did some video analysis and I will check the data again and I found three or four corners where I can do better and I will try that in the second part of the race. With all the different classes, there are plenty of teams who have set their sights on the top step of their class podium. Uh, for sure in our class, maybe also in overall, but we will see, it's still a long time to go, nine hours, long, long, long day, so we will see. Now we are one lap uh, less than uh, 65, but he, they stopped to, to do a fuel. So we start like this, we have a 50 minute stint because we, have, we are not have a full tank. So uh, let's see, it's nine hours, it's long. Even if your car is slower than your class competitors, strategy and consistency can give you an equal chance. Well, they have, uh, let's say, a two to three second faster speed per lap than we have. But we can stay out a bit longer from fueling. So we'll see where that at the end turns out. We don't know yet. So how fierce will the racing be today? Well, we plan to have a, a quiet start, uh, get the ball rolling with a decent average, and then we will decide after the first two hours uh, how aggressive we will be during the race. The two warm-up laps are completed. And the field is coming to the line for the final nine hours of the Hankook 12 Hours of Navarra. The second part of the race is underway and it's a fantastic start from the 85 car from second position. Looks like it already crossed the line before the pole sitting 34, but this doesn't result in a penalty. The rule at the start to keep order at the start and keep it from being crazy is that you're not allowed to pass the car in front of you or pull out to pass the car in front of you until you cross the uh, the finish line. Here it was the finish line he described in the, in the driver's meeting. And so uh, as long as you stay in a straight line and you go when the lights for, go from red to dark, meaning you don't wait for a green light, you just, when the light, like Formula One, the lights go out, you go uh, and just in a straight line. And I went in a straight line when the lights were out. Joe Foster pulling away from the field. Behind him, a battle for second position between Forsch and Bohemia Energy, the A6 Pro cars who started fourth and seventh. They're knocking on the door of the 34 car collection Mercedes, the A6 and Paul starter. The start of the second lap, the number 11 Ferrari moves up another spot. Yeah, we had a good start. I was a bit lucky because in the other cars there were uh, gentlemen drivers. Uh, but the car seems uh, very good. Uh, we have a good pace. Everything still is still working well. We had a very good start today. There was four or five of us uh, sort of at, at the head of the pack today, the second day that were low on fuel and low on tires from yesterday. And so we knew there was four or five of us that were going to have to stop shortly. Uh, we got a great start, led for a couple, three or four laps and, and then uh, pitted and, and uh, got tires and fuel and uh, continued, continued on our way. Different strategies still to play out. As we just heard, some teams start the day with a full fuel tank, some nearly empty. Yesterday we did uh, too much uh, laps with uh, the fuel and this morning we have to save fuel. The fuel consumption numbers are essential for the teams. One less fuel stop could save you minutes on track. We start uh, P8 and I can overtake uh, all the car. And 20 minutes after the start, um, I, uh, I was a P2 just behind the, the Ferrari and um, yes, very perfect. Now uh, it's a very long uh, race so it's very difficult to overtake and the goal is to stay on the, on the track, um, don't touch other car and we will see the, the results. After the fuel stops, the top of the leaderboard looks very different than when the race resumed.
Different types of cars require different service. The crossbow apparently in need of an oil top-up to get to the chequered flag. Here's how they stand after five hours of racing. The top three, only A6 Pro cars. Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha, 165 laps completed. Edex Sport number 17, one lap behind. Third overall, the 29 Porsche Racing Porsche. 51 seconds further back is the leading A6 Am car, the Pro Sport Performance number 85. They've got a lap on the Swiss team number 15 in second in their class, the Audi 34 of car collection, about another 26 seconds further back in third. In the 991 class, the EB Motors 73, now with a two-lap lead over its nearest competitor, the EDEX 75 Porsche in second place has got a lap lead over the Huber Motorsport number 81 in third. This is endurance. The team, uh, the spirit, the change with the other uh, drivers, and uh, to enjoy all this uh, together. I enjoy very, very good the endurance races. This is endurance. There's a wide variety of cars on the entry list at the Navara circuit for the Hankook 12 hours of Navara. Different models have different handling characteristics. One of the major influences in how the cars go around the circuit is where the engine is placed. Most of the racers have a traditional front engine layout. The Porsches, of course, have their engine at the back. There are cars here this weekend with the engine in the middle. Yes, they drive different. But the, the Audi is more driving like on a nasal, and uh, the Porsche with the heck engine is driving more on, on, on the, the back axle. And if you have a front uh, driven car, you have mostly, if you are too much speed, uh, oversteering. When drivers switch cars, they need to get used to the different handling characteristics. You have, uh, in, the, in the first time, you, you need to, to understand the car. It's a completely different driving uh, um, position, driving uh, still. And uh, so you have, um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the beginning, it's a lot of understeer, but you have to know the car, you have to brake earlier, so you have to make more zigzag race than like a li line like this. Huh? Although the weight distribution on the Mercedes is very good, uh, and so is a Porsche, though it's much uh, different in terms of pitch, the way it moves weight forward and backward when you're uh, moving your feet on the gas and, and the brake. And so the car handles a lot differently depending on where the engine is and also how pitch sensitive the, the, the car is. And uh, so we're still learning the Mercedes. If the setup is so hard on a mid-engine car, why go for it? Because of the weight balance, it's, it's better to have on the wheel X and in the back X the same weight and you can only get that if you put the engine in the middle. In a mid-engine, normally the balance of the car is better, um, so tire wear should be more equal from front to back. Um, but okay, I think with, if you have it wrong, it's worse than a front-engine car. Wherever the engine is, you still have to know how to handle it. We are still learning this car, it's new to us, and we have, I haven't raced a front-engine car I think in five or six years, and so it was definitely uh, um, it's an adjustment for us, and we're still learning the car both from a setup perspective with um, engineering and also driving it. Seven hours to go, so not even halfway. A decent lead for the number 11 driver, Yiri Pisarik, happy to be back in the pits after an exhausting stint. Some of that difficulty, though, was self-inflicted. It was really difficult for me because uh, I just didn't switch the air condition in the car, so it was really hot just to gain few horsepower, <laughs> but I think that was not a good idea because I stepped out from the car completely dead, so next time I will use it. Problems for the 446 Ginetta from Endurance Team Romania. I don't know what's happened with the with Schrauben, it's brand new and uh, it's broke. Uh, we'll see the, the shop. It's, uh, I think it's uh, one problem with production. The marshals used the Code 60 to clear the track of debris. 
Drivers know that not respecting the code 60 can result in an unwanted penalty. There was a Porsche on the left side, so you cannot see the, the, the flag, but anyway, the, the, the situation is clear. When you overtake under, under code 60, it's a penalty. It's a it's fixed rule also in the, in the Creventic. It gets 60 seconds every time because under code 60 could be people on the track, so it's really dangerous and it makes sense that you penalize this a bit more. But yeah, for us, it was really pretty hard now. Difficulties for some of the races, others having it rather easy. Well, I think it was uh, very easy and uh, with, with, without problems. Uh, one, one hour, uh, 39 minutes uh, and no problems, only on track. For the moment, the traffic is good and the track is not bad to, to overtake, but you, you also never know about the car because after uh, eight hours, seven hours, something can happen. So we cross the fingers and we go ahead. QSR Racing Skill knows how an unexpected problem can change the face of your race. Last night they took a 10 lap penalty when they had to work on their car overnight. Everyone else was in Park Fermi. But now they're fighting back to the top of their class. Their nearest opponent, the 446 Ginetta of Endurance Team Romania, is in the garage and being worked on. Yes, the other team is in the pit box. Uh, so for us, uh, we can push now uh, and try to be uh, again in front of them. Uh, so uh, we need a little bit of luck sometimes. Five hours to go. What are the tactics for the hours to come? About the tactics, I don't know because uh, we have um, two uh, cut 60 during the race, so it's difficult to write uh, the future. Uh, depend of, uh, of uh, the fuel in the car, depend of the tires, depend uh, of the feeling in the car. After seven hours, the field is mixed up again. Nobody who can really feel safe with their position. No manufacturer dominating at the front of the field. A Porsche, a Mercedes and a Ferrari in the top three. Porsche Racing number 29, 85 of Pro Sport Performance. The number 11, Bohemia Energy Ferrari in third. QSR 254 started those 10 laps down this morning, now has an 11 lap lead in the GT4 class. The 446 Endurance Team Romania Ginetta has just left the pit box and is back in the fight. In SPX, True Racing number 116 has a 12 lap lead over the Mark Focus 58 from VDS. The other crossbow of True Racing, number 117, in third. When watching endurance racing, it's normal that everyone is looking at the cars and their drivers. That's just the most visible part of the competition. No car or driver could have the chance to even reach the finish line without the crew. Not just the mechanics we see working on the car, the engineers behind the TV screens, team managers, strategists, solely or combined, they determine the team's ever so important tactics. They are absolutely vital because without their knowledge, like we wouldn't be able to plan any strategy. And endurance races are won on strategies, not on one second being on one second faster. They're won being the overall time. Strategy, therefore, not just a one-man job. It's very difficult. We are with five people all the time calculating about how we can end the race with uh, less, pit stop, less pit stops as possible. Responsibilities are often split. The engineer responsible for collecting the data and the tactics are based on that. In the race, we have to try to make, also before, but also in the race, we have to try to make the drivers faster. So we, we, compre we look what is the data from the drivers. That is the job of the engineer. For the strategy, I want to know numbers. So he has the numbers for me. What is the fuel consumption? How long can we drive? So that things, and then we, we try to find out a good uh, strategy. Perhaps it's surprising that some race engineers don't even look at the live circuit images on TV. Uh, I don't need this. I need just lap time and different time for the other car. I don't need uh, the, the, the imaging from the race. So the tacticians are crucial for each and every race team. Yeah, we are taking part on a long uh, distance series. Uh, we are doing now 12 hours and the strategy uh, also in Creventic is very important with the code 60s and all people around here are very important like the drivers. It's an ever-changing strategic situation in the 24-hour endurance series powered by Hankook. Keep an eye on your competitors, try and use their situation, their problems, their tactics to your advantage. This is especially important in a field with so many different makes of cars. As you see, uh, Mercedes needs to uh, change the brake pads. Uh, 
for us it's uh, I think it's a little bit too early to change the brake pads now but uh, uh, maybe they need to do that I hope we will not so maybe th this will be also part of the strategy because uh, they lose the time in the pit stop so we will see not all Mercedes are alike the guys took the uh the brake pad out, took a look at it, and said, yeah, we, we've wasted some time doing this, but we think they're good to go. So they kind of put us back together, and we're still running on those brakes. So it was sort of a safety thing, to tell you the truth. We're, we've had uh, experiences with brake pads wearing, and, and we just don't want to be there again when we run out of brake pad at the end of the race. And for those who are watching the Pro Sport car, that delay may have played into their hands. We are looking for... Uh, number 85 is the first of the class and then we have to to race against this but that is not helped when the swiss team number 15 loses its grip on the tarmac and slides into the tire barrier and i tried to push too much uh, i was uh, behind the audi and i i want to keep it uh, closer to the audi but uh, i was too fast and my tire was done completely done then in the last corner i'm just spinning and push to the to the wall the mercedes gets back to the pits under its own power well it's not broken it's just something in the front uh, but uh, they just uh, fix it and now it's going on the, the race yes a much bigger drama for the true racing crossbow 117 off the track, hitting the tyre barrier, but with a far more damaging impact. The driver just can't believe it. To this moment, the car was perfect and I lost the car on. I, th I think the Mercedes over overtook me. I, I was in the, in the uh, braking. And, and uh, I don't know, I, I can't say nothing at this time now. Another code 60, another opportunity for the teams to refuel the car. That opportunity taken by the other True Racing crossbow, but their pit stop has ended up going into the garage. Riley came in and uh, we had to check at the stop and we see, have seen that, uh, that uh, the whole carrier is, uh, was, was a little bit loose, so obviously the nut didn't really, didn't really work on the... So. You know, in the rush of a pit stop, this can happen, and uh, now with the whole uh, back has to be changed because uh, as we went out again, so it was a lot of uh, it was a lot of damage. On the same lap, both the 116 and 117 True Racing crossbow are retired. It's devastating for the car builder. Yeah, this is really uh, a shame that we lost two cars in in one lap, so to say, and uh, yeah, this is simply simply a tragedy for all people that have put so much effort into into this race and now it's uh, it's quickly over the code 60 pit stops have changed the dynamic of the race again second third and fourth overall now within 20 seconds of each other two class leaders together the car collection 34 leading the a6 am and the 73 from eb mortis leading the 991 class marco fretz's lead and the 73 porsche has just become a little more secure as the EDEX 75 second in class has had a spin. I heard uh, a strange noise uh, on the car just after the, the call 60. Uh, and I asked to the team to check on the, the right line, but uh, it didn't hurt uh, anything. So the noise uh, go on uh, every lap. And at, at the end, uh, the, 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 the gearbox was just uh, broke. So that's it. We, we broke in the, the, the gearbox. And uh, unfortunately, we have to, to stop the race. Plenty of action and overtaking on the Navarra track. Three abreast battles taking place. Racing drivers always want to keep the car pointing in the right direction. But if you're going to spin, do it in style and attract the attention of the TV. I was my mistake. Uh, the balance of the brakes was not good. It's uh, under steering, and uh, when I push on the on the gas, uh, I have too much uh, over steering after that. Paul Lafargue has spun his Mercedes AMG GT3. He's kept control of the car and stopped it on the track, but he's made the bad situation worse by moving off the track, straight into the gravel trap. He's stuck at the back of the trap and has to be pulled out. He's lost a lot of time. Nine hours of racing completed. I don't think anyone would dare to claim victory at the moment. Let's take a look at the intermediate standings.
An impressive but not invincible three-lap lead for the Czech team of Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha. 289 laps have been completed by the number 11 Ferrari. The rest of the top four, all on the 286th lap. Force Racing in second, just three seconds ahead of the 85 Pro Sport performance car. Pro Sport are leading the A6 AM class, 36 seconds ahead of the car collection Audi. Swiss team Mercedes, two laps down in third. In the 991 class, EB Motors number 73 leading, Huber Motorsport 81 a second, third and fourth, Porsche Lorient 64 and 65 cars, only 0.265 of a second between them. This is endurance. Yeah, actually, the engineer has to calculate the, the fuel in the car, the tires. We have also a lot of mechanics who are doing all work on the car, like changing tires, brakes during the race. And yeah, I think all people are uh, together here very important. And uh, yeah, if we have a good team, uh, you can uh, be on for the podium or the win the race. We've already had nine hours of racing in the FIA International Endurance Series 12 Hours of Navarra. This is a single tyre championship and it's good to see that the rubber is working well for each car racing here. Our product is developed for endurance race. We spend a lot of development work, a lot of engineering power to produce and to especially to develop a very good endurance tyre. That means reliable, long mileage. Drivers, especially those who race in other championships with different tyre manufacturers, have noticed the difference. We, we have a good comparison because in other series we uh, also use other tyres. The good thing on the Hancock tyres is that they have a very, very, uh, I would say, um, good performance over a longer distance. So the tyres don't let you down uh, after, I would say, half an hour or so. So this, this is a real good uh, tyre for, for endurance racing. This is all down to the philosophy and vision Hancock has on the characteristics of the ideal endurance racing tyre. Our main target in tyre development is, number one, priority is safety. Absolutely safety first. So that means we have no interest in a tyre puncture. Therefore, we develop a tyre which is, for example, not the ultimate fastest for the qualification lap. Maybe, maybe a tenth or a hundredth of a second slower than other manufacturers. But for the endurance, so it means when you go for a long distance, one and a half hours stint, our tyre is faster because the tyre is very reliable and especially very safe. For example, during the 12 hour of Nevada here, we have not one single tire failure, not one uh, single tire puncture. And this is our main interest, and this is this what, why Hankook is so strong in endurance race. We have almost no tire failures. The final three hours of the Hankook uh, 12 hours Nevada are about to uh, start. And uh, what we've seen today is, uh, has been a good battle for both the overall lead, but actually also in all the classes. Uh, we, we've seen some drama um, among some cars, unfortunately, uh, as well. But um, what we, from an organizer's point of view, are happy uh, to see here is that um, all the drivers, they're, they're enjoying uh, the circuit. The weather is nice, the people are friendly, and uh, we're having a lot of fun. As the racing continues, the number one Hofer Racing Mercedes is pointing in the wrong direction. I, I saw the other car and I just didn't want to lose him, so that's why I was uh, too early on the throttle. And then, uh, of course, when I spinned, the first thing was uh, looking for the other cars where they are. And when I saw that they see me and they pass me, I could concentrate on how I get away from that spot again. The 446 Ginetta team have had to deal with a couple of issues this weekend and now is slow on track. That's a shame for the car that started this weekend so well. The car went fantastic, really, and uh, all the team handled very well. Till the moment, unfortunately, one sensor for the gear change uh, decided to lose her, so it was not shifting gears. And uh, from that moment backwards, uh, like, they managed to fix it, but then from being 10 laps ahead, we have been 10 laps behind. And uh, from the moment I got out, uh, there was something wrong with the car, but not that wrong. And uh, we decided to, to stay out a few more laps to see what was wrong, and then the, an arm broke. <laughs> In endurance racing, you always need to expect the unexpected, as Robert Renard finds out. Uh, it was a pretty good stint for us. Oh no, it's starting to rain. Um, I think we have to prepare for the pit stop. That's a bad timing for us because we went um, two minutes ago to pit to change to new tyres and now, yeah, it starts to rain. The Spanish sun has given way to rain on the Saquito de Nevada. Another game changer for the race. 
different driver abilities and car characteristics have now come to the fore. Most of the teams have decided to come in for rain tyres as soon as they can. I think uh, the weather, we, we have now rain tyres on the car. We, we changed again after one, one lap with new slicks. It's unbelievable to, to drive with new slicks in, in, in rain. And I think it was the right decision because we will have uh, red condition the next 10, 15 rounds. Not all drivers thinking a change of tyres is required. I like rain uh, and uh, it was uh, surprised me that it was so, so uh, good grip uh, offline. So I uh, choose to stay out to try uh, to, to hit because um, it was uh, take a chance to, when it stopped rains and uh, it was a strategy who uh, was successful. <laughs> the decision to change tyres or not often left to the driver. We were at the third position and uh, like my driver wanted to, 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 to keep fighting and he did uh, 15 minutes uh, in the slick and it was pretty, pretty good. Running better than the team expected, the 29 Porsche racing Porsche. Yeah, we know from the beginning of the race uh, that we, we don't have the pace uh, to win the race. Uh, we had some good luck with the code 60 today and uh, with uh, fuel saving yesterday. We were quite uh, running all the time at P2, sometimes on P1. And yeah, now the rain, uh, and we had some small issues on the brake in the back. Uh, and this put us back uh, to the fourth place. And uh, yeah, still sec uh, second place in the class. And uh, yeah, we survived, and our strong uh, trucks are coming. The number 15 Mercedes AMG GT still trying to profit from the earlier rain shower. We tried to uh, refuel once less than we did the plan was because of the rain, because um, we used a lot uh, less fuel while, uh, while it was raining. We used about uh, two liters a lap, not 2.5. Uh, so um, we tried to uh, refuel once less. But the team doesn't expect this to be possible. We have to come. Yeah, we have to come. But just short, short, short. And we have two laps uh, uh, advantage of the Hofer. So I think it works. Hofer racing number one, working hard to make up a two lap gap. Christian is pushing like hell, um, so I don't know, uh, expectations, uh, we, we are really pushing hard to get that uh, podium place, number three, but uh, I guess we need a little bit of luck that that would happen. Not so lucky, Team Lorient Racing. Their expectations are not to be met, whilst their cars are running third and fourth in the 991 class. We hope to do P3, but uh, we, we, yeah, we will hope to, fight to, um, to finish the race. But a spanner is thrown in the works. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, perhaps this is technical because like we are sure of the of the fuel so there is perhaps something wrong with the car so we will see uh, when the car will be here yeah yeah it's really <laughs> never say you have win before you cross it's stop on the track the car is fired up and the value of a good crew of mechanics is proven again even before Frederick Ansel is in the garage, the technicians have got the bonnet open. It takes them just a couple of seconds to solve the problem and get the car back out to finish the 10 minutes left in the race. I'm a little problem with uh, fuel pressure in the FIA safety uh, is the locket. I don't know why. A few cars making a splash and dash to have enough fuel to get to that checkered flag. The 446 even gets a quick checkup from the crew. We are refueling 10 litres, we don't have uh, benzene for finish, and uh, we are checked. We, are, uh, we have uh, also 30 uh, rounds, and uh, doesn't matter, better uh, we are checked. The flag is out, 12 hours are completed, and it's the Czech team of Bohemia Energy with Scuderia Praha that takes victory on the maiden race of the 24-hour GT Endurance Series on the Navarra circuit. The team ecstatic with the result. They had a comfortable lead entering the last lap, not the situation for second and third, only a second between them when they started the final 3.9 kilometers. It's the QSR 254 in the middle of that battle, just before the finish line. And after 720 minutes of racing, second and third are just 1.6 seconds apart. Car collection, definitely a very happy team.
Joe Foster coming home third overall and delighted with the result. Oh, it was, it was a lot of fun. Everybody was on different strategies and different states and states of tires and gas and fuel. And uh, all credit to the 34 guys. Fantastic run for everybody. Um, Pro Sport uh, AMG Mercedes ran fantastic as always. And uh, Charles and Charlie did a fantastic job. So very happy with the result. Yes, it was a great stint. It was a very long stint and uh, with rain, uh, that was also very tricky. But I think we had a good strategy and a good car in the rain and uh, in the in the in the wet, and so uh, or in the dry. Uh, and so we are very happy with the with uh, with the result. And uh, yeah, nice teammates, nice engineer. Everything was good this weekend. Everything must be perfect. And this time we did uh, a perfect job. Uh, I did my. Yeah, Iri did, uh, Josef did, and also all the crew did uh, a perfect car, and so that was a perfect race. The last three hours of the race have proven to be very exciting, is um, that there was a battle up until the end, up until the very last lap, and um, it doesn't matter how long a race is, you can always have a, have a good fight, and uh, especially in endurance, with all the strategy that is involved in a 12-hour uh, race, there was just seconds between the first and second in the A6M class. The final standings confirm the three-lap lead and the win for Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha. Notice in second, the car collection Motorsport 34 has a slightly larger margin over third place than the 1.6 seconds at the line. That's because there was a 20 second penalty for the number 85 Pro Sport Performance Mercedes added after the race. Bohemia Energy wins the A6 class, 29.4 second, EDEC 17 third. In the A6 AM class, car collection wins from Pro Sport in second and the Swiss team number 15 in third. 991. EB Motors 73 takes the victory, Huber second, 64 Porsche Lorient third. The VDS number 58 are the only occupants of the SPX podium, the other competitors didn't finish the race. And in GT4, QSR Racing Skill take home the trophies for their class win. The 446 Endurance Team Romania Ginetta team are second. Before the decision was made to split the event into two parts, the race would have continued until midnight. Finishing earlier does have its advantages. For us, the change timetable also comes with the advantage of going to sleep in time tonight. From the 24th until the 26th of May, we're going to go to Imola for the Hancock 12 hours of Imola. And um, we are expecting a packed grid with a GT and TCE series uh, together in one 12 hour race. Whilst the first ever endurance race in Navarra has ended, the season has only been placed on pause. The championship and the season will continue on the last full weekend of May. Today, Car Collection extended their lead with their A6 AM win. Can they extend that lead even more? Will the Red Camel Jordan's 303 Seat extend their lead in the TCE series? Be there as a spectator or a competitor. All the information you need can be found on the 24HGTSeries.com website.